Race three on Saturday is the Parramatta Leagues Club Magic Night Stakes. It's a group two event for the two-year-old fillies. It's the last chance the girls get to qualify for the Golden Slipper. A sale, $3.30. <coughs> Great filly, $7. $11 thump. Uh, sorry, earlier, $11 bull, bull mm. Is it bull bulla? Bull bulla, yeah. Okay. Um, Vocalise 17, scanned over 10, 8 cents of height. Itamiri $6, and that'll do us. What's it doing here? Well, I can't have a sale. I went around like a croc the other day, so leave me out of it. Um, you know, the, the, the form around her, well, in some quarters it hasn't stacked up. In cahoots was beaten the other week when it came mm. to town. Um, haven't seen much of frill seeking or drawing forward since December, but uh, <coughs> yeah, I'm not convinced the form's super duper anyway. And the way she went the other day, uh, I don't want a bar of her. The horse I found is a horse that got me at Christmas, um, before Christmas, is it Itam a Miri from the Snowden stable. Um, got both of us, didn't it? I bet up big time on this in, behind Villa Verde in the <laughs> in a race on Melbourne Cup Day. Was it Melbourne Cup Day? I think it was uh, Melbourne Cup Day or Oaks Day, one Oaks or the Day, other. Yeah. Oh no, it was Melbourne Cup Day. Yeah, it might have been Melbourne Cup Day. They then took her to uh, Mooney Valley. She ran second to a thing called Calcutta, which was actually beaten again yesterday or Wednesday at uh, Sandown. I think the key to this filly's chances is Barrier 1. Yeah. She can fire up. Uh, she fired up on Daboo. From Barrier 1, she should be able to get cover straight away, which will allow her to settle and allow her to run the trip out. She tried really well at Warwick Farm leading up to this. Um, I would have liked to have seen her do it away from home, but she did do it, and she did it in good style. Time wasn't anything flash, but yeah. it was the way she did it. She was cruising along. Uh, yep, she's me, six bucks. Yeah, look, I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't work this race out. I, I saw Ida Mary there as well after what happened in Melbourne and thought, and it also tried quite well. And, it's obviously a last ditch attempt to try and get it into the slippers. Is it going to go to the slipper if it wins on Saturday? Oh, I'd say they would. Yeah. Still in the race. Um, I don't think the slipper winner's here. I don't think we'll see no. the slipper winner tomorrow, I on Saturday. I just can't get excited about this race. Um, look, Shahad's a horse. It's one of Gay's. Um, I think it will improve a lot on a drier surface from what it did first up. And I don't know about the format of that race. Sweet idea. Probably looks OK. Whiskey all round didn't go too good, though, last week, did it? So... It's a bit hard to line it all up. You don't want to make it him. That yeah. first up run might have just hurt him, mate. Yeah, it might have done. He did get stuck on the worst part of the track. And <coughs> oh. the horse who... He was playing, but... Yeah. The first up run, you know, on that heavy track, it, all horses react different to that. Yeah. And look, Thumb improved a lot on a dry track last start, which I, I think we might have tipped it on the show. Um, and if it sticks on the... Dry, if it stays dry on Saturday, which it looks like it will, then from barrier two, it's, it's the kind of horse that could come out and, and win this race as well. But... Ida Miri, Shahad and Thump, I can't really split them. If a sale's right, it'll probably win this race, you'd have to think. I mean, if you go back six or seven weeks and put this horse in this field, it starts at $1.40, doesn't it? Yeah, but was it ever entitled to be $1.40? I think that's a question that's... Yeah, the yeah. market might have got it wrong there, definitely, but... You know, you see these early season two-year-olds that come out and win by panels, and all of a sudden they're short and short and... Yeah. You know. Didn't have much luck first up, though. Who? Um, a sale. Mate, it, it couldn't keep track. up. Don't no, worry about it didn't have much luck. It no, couldn't keep up. Oh, I do look at it because I just think, oh, well, if it jumps on terms and... It, oh, you just don't know, though. It's had that half a foot removed and everything like that. That's it? what I mean, mate. For horses with feet problems, it's just a recipe for disaster on the punt. Yeah. And look, you, you, anyway, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Should we punch on? You know, if it had got clear runs, it probably gets beaten too. It still gets well beaten. Yeah. And I don't think the form out of that romantic moon race is much top. No, nah, probably not. Yeah, anyway. We'll find out on Saturday, though. Well, we'll find out next week. I'm tipping Romantic Moon's a chance of running a solid 7th or 8th. In the slipper? Yeah, no knock on that. Uh, we'll find out on Saturday, though, won't we? If a sale's going any good? Oh, regarding her, yeah, but... No. Anyway. All right. Race for the Bowman's, Bowman's Office Furniture, Pago Pago Stakes, over 1,200 metres for the boys. Last horse to win this and win the slipper was Stratum in 2005. 
and what relevance has that got in 2013? Well, just, I don't know, if you're looking to get on in early markets for the slipper, trying to pick one out of this, which I probably would suggest you don't. <laughs> exactly. But when was the last Magic Night winner to win the... It would be the I remember there was um, that filly of David Hayes. Hey, that filly of David Hayes has won it oh, five or six years ago now. I remember it was favourite after it, and then got back in clothes with blood pouring out of its nose. Oh, really? Yeah, I can't think of its name. Um, Fureza, seven bucks. Good job, bro, 550. Dothraki, 460. Three sidestep. 13 flak jacket. Diamond Oasis, six. And that'll do me. I just know the race I found hard. Um, both Fuerza, Dothraki, probably a shade disappointing, particularly the top weight first up. Um, I've gone with Dothraki. I just thought he did a little bit wrong in the run first up. Uh, all the talk. I think it's the right form for the boys anyway. Um, I think he's been probably the best of the boys so far. Uh, going into the slipper, this horse was pretty comfortably beaten by him though, so I'm not going to tip him with any confidence. But um, he might improve a bit here second up, and both jockey and trainer have jumped off, or jockey's jumped off, and trainer's continually said that this horse will just keep improving with age because it's mentally not quite there. If it takes the next step on Saturday, probably just about wins the race and gets the blinkers on for the first time. That can often switch the two-year-olds on too, but um, I'm not going to be charging into this race. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I was on Dothraki first up. I th he needs to improve dramatically. Uh, he was well beaten. The blinkers might help. I think he's a three-year-old. I think he's a three-year-old. They're chasing the, the slipper dream, you know, owned by syndicators. They're chasing the dream to have a runner. Um, so I won't be with him. I've come back to I've come back to the favourite, but I won't be backing it. Sidestep. I just, you know, he went around by himself there last week. You just don't know what effect that had on him. But I, for one, didn't respect the criterion form. Uh, I got a kick in the pants there last week in the Todman because of that. I think you've got to respect it now. And this horse was closing and taking ground off Criterion in the Black Opal Stakes. So I think he's also got, all got to beat, provided last week didn't hurt him too much. Okay. All right. But other than that, pretty young. it's me. All right. I won't be having a bet in the race. No. It's probably one won't. of the few races all day, I won't be. Race five is the TAB Opponent Stakes over 1,900 metres. It's a Group Three event for the fillies and mares, three-year-olds and up, and the market. Crafty owner, 440, nine bucks fibrillation, six dollars thigh, six dollars Aliana Tilled, uh, Shamadani 11, 850 Sindarin, a Pingle 11, ominous quality nine. You're up here, sir. I'm up. Uh, tricky race. Um, definitely a tricky race. Mm. Crafty earners always to beat. She is mm. an underrated. She is a good mare. All right, and she is an underrated mare. She always runs well. Uh, never puts in a bad run. Never puts in a bad run. As a rule, I've just got my doubts about the aspiration quality form. Uh, Aliana Tilled couldn't get close to them uh, at its last, well, since the Oaks last year. Yep. Then all of a sudden she comes out and gets beaten a long head, a short half head. That's just got me saying that form is poison. It's probably the run of the race as well. Well, there you go. So maybe that form's just poison. All right, so I've completely discarded the form based on that. It, yep. She might have just found form again. Yep. Right? But I just can't come at the fact that she has. Uh, so I went looking for other form lines. Fibrillation's the one with the right form line, and she carried 58 and a half last start. She drops to 57 here. She finished behind Bello. Hoy Lonnie ran second in that race uh, at Rose Hill, and he was playing last week, but that's Hoy Lonnie. I'm not worried about Hoy Lonnie. Bello's flying in the form, as I said, it held up at Newcastle in the new market. Yep. But the problem with fibrillation is it's going to be a firm surface, and that's not her go. I then found Sindarin, who comes out of that Canberra Cup race, which mm -hmm. Calicio came out of, but she's drawn barrier three over 1,900 metres. 13. Which, sorry? 13. Yeah. Well, oh, sorry, yeah, barrier 13. She's drawn off the track, that's what I'm trying to make. Um, 
over 1900 metres, so I can see her either having to go well, well back or being trapped three deep, so I can't have her. Mm -hmm. I came down to a pingle, uh, Mick Kent's horse. Yep. She had the two runs this campaign, uh, and she seems to race fresh that they put three weeks between each of her runs. First up, she got beaten about two and a quarter behind ominous quality and perfectly stunning. Um, and getting up, you know, warming up really late. They then stepped her up to the mile in the Schweppes Trophy. She finished six, beaten 1.7 behind Benaria, Spirit Song, High Bell. Well, they're as good a yeah. mares as what they've got in Victoria yeah. at this time at Carnival time. So there's, the form should be similar on a similar plane to the Sydney, this Sydney mares form. We now step, you know, she was hitting the line that day. We now step to 1900, which is what she's crying out for. If she can get around Rose Hill, which a lot of Victorian horses sometimes don't first go, then I think she's got a genuine hope in the race. And at $11, she's a great price. Okay. Fair enough. Um, I share the same sentiments with Crafty Erno. Look, if she gets out of each way, odds you could back her each way. I'm pretty sure she'll be running a hole. Um, exactly the same as you with uh, fibrillation as well, but just needs a sting out of the ground. Um, she's got a bit of class edge probably on most of these, you'd think. Um, Aliana Tilt, I thought she was the runner of the race out of that aspiration. She came from an impossible position. They crawled in it and she ran home well. I found Sindarin. Um, look, you, you sort of outlined exactly why that she comes out with a different form line to some of these. It might be the right one. She comes out of a race. She's raced, well, she's raced against the boys at the last two starts. She comes back to Mare's Grey, which is usually a recipe for success. I take your point about Barrier 13. The way I assessed it is you're getting, I think I found nine or 950 or 10 bucks last night. You're getting about that price to make sure that uh, Karen can get some cover from 13, which is what we'll be banking on. I think if she gets some cover and gets the right track into the race, then um, she could be too good for him. That's just what I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm happy to back Sindarin at the 850 on there or nine bucks, I think there is around town. Um, I think that's quite a good price, and I'd certainly rather be taking that than the $4.40 on Crafty Earner from a win point of view anyway. Mm.